Well, Brom, we're going down memory lane. We've been doing it with some of the old collaborators. I had a senior show coming up soon with comics uh, in it, and you were looking for someone to do the, the Wendigo comic, to hit the ground running, and uh, it's what kept me in New York for the next 15 years or so. I remember going up to your, your place, going over the thumbnails there, and also taking uh, right. reference photos of, of the place, because that's where we, you knew it was going to shoot. It was a nice way to pre-visualize the story making concrete choices about what the movie was going to become. I came back and the project was doing this animated opening sequence together for pitch for a Cartoon Network series. At that point I hadn't really animated anything but I was up for it. <laughs> I tried to do, like, you know, to the best of my knowledge, how these things go in cartoon world. Um, so I painted the backgrounds. Um, I think at that point we were already on the same page with loving the, the, the behind the scenes books for Miyazaki. And I love those, still those, all the backgrounds to me are just amazing. Uh, I did it a less watercolor -y, more acrylic. Did all the, um, the lines and uh, coloring on the computers, so it had that very cel-shaded look. I would come in week to week with a couple seconds of animation, you know. We created outlines for, I don't know, seven or ten, like, episodes, you know, just rough rough outlines. And yeah, lots of, like, a, what they called the Bible uh, of, like, head turns and full body uh, designs and, and, and all that. I think we were, building on your themes from the very beginning. I mean, that was the whole idea, to bring some, this kind of sense of, you know, nature fighting back against, you know, man's hubris or man's uh, overzealous industrialization. It's really the glass eye picks ethos of uh, do it yourself, you know? If you want to do something, figure out how to do it, and then do it. Even back to our, which I'm not exactly sure where it fits, but the, the anti-Bush comic, we decided to do a, a free giveaway comic telling, exposing all of the, the lies and the, uh, the rhetoric and the neoconservative agenda. But uh, yeah, it was, it was this idea that uh, if people just knew what was going on, um, they would open their eyes and we could be the ones to, uh, comics could be the perfect medium. Yeah, yeah, L last winter I did some honest to goodness storyboards. We made a little, we tried to figure out the design of like the trailers, how that would work. I remember making a little model where people would sleep versus where they would common area and how you, you could shoot that. I mean, it, it was all stuff that, you know, has to get done, has to get figured out. Then when you finally had your, your real art directors and whatever come in, there was like a foundation that they could, you know, get moving on. Yeah, I think for pretty much, I was working on the comic for a lot of the production time. When you guys wrapped, I think I probably wrapped close to the same time. And uh, then I started coming in as kind of a, a creative eye to, to help describe the movement. I remember I actually did a few anime, uh, like 2D animation passes of like a walk cycle for the creature and then try to sit in with the CG guys and help art direct the look of the creature in the CG environment and also how it moved. Open your eyes! I don't see anything! Ah! The boat! Give me the boat! Open your eyes! You bastard, you're making me do this! So for the roost, it was a movie about you know, bats attacking people. So the, the key thing was like, how are we gonna do the bats? We did a, a, a fake, uh, a test basically of you like 
going out to Tompkins Square Park and just pretending like you were getting attacked by stuff. I did like these bats kind of swooping around. And at that point, the thought was like, we could do this with these 2D bats if we needed to. We met Glenn. This is what he wanted to do. He was stuck in advertising and he wanted to be a filmmaker uh, in, in the horror genre. And so he, he was like, yeah, yeah, come, come, I'll get you, I'll get you see 3D effects, CGI, the whole thing. And, and it worked. The guy was falling out of a barn. We were trying to match that with a dummy hitting the ground. It wasn't looking natural at all. And so I had to individually move each frame so it, it, it rotated a little more and matched with the, 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 the shot of the dummy hitting the ground. Um, but it came off. It feels like when it happens, you're gonna cut away or cut in, but it's just this wide shot and the guy actually hits the ground and so it usually gets the ooh. And then of course, the, the, the Wunderkind, uh, <laughs> Ty West, who's like fresh out of uh, SVA, was like going in there and ordering everybody around. And <laughs> amazing. I was like, I, I, I remember when I was the fresh faced kid. <laughs> So then Glenn had gotten his foot in the glass eye pick store and he was like, I got a script too. <laughs> Thank you for your sacrifice. Um, so I think that was around I Sell the Dead. Also, I think the kind of look of them with the kind of computer coloring is close to that kind of era of the work. Christmas, which um, which was a lot of fun. Uh, which one was it? Uh, the one where uh, it was like from the point of view of Santa's cat. There was nothing for me to do but leave. But first, I ate his face and genitals. I don't need a doctor. I feel fine. Skin of my teeth, what's the, the, the one? Skin and bones. Skin and bones, yeah, yeah. So we started doing these pre -vis drawings of like this very emaciated, sunken uh, stomach, rib cage, sunken cheek. He, he starts getting skinnier and skinnier and he's inhabited by the, 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 the hungry Wendigo spirit. the guy Doug Jones this was one of the times when you actually got to see his face and even the face the way it worked out looked uh, just like a lot of the drawings um, and I, I think that was I remember watching that and thinking it was a, a nice a really successful project um, you know from paper to finished product when I work in comics with myself it, there's not a lot of collaboration I'm kind of just doing it by myself so coming up working with you guys it was really nice to be able to work in that uh, collaborative environment and uh, bounce ideas off of each other and uh, and also I would say I really had a chance to kind of learn filmmaking and you know f storytelling from the cinematic point of view which I think definitely you know, helped or informed choices that I've made in the comics work that I've done. That's awesome, man. I think that's it. We can go have a drink. Cheers. <laughs> but you are my friend. Ben.